Hey, hello, and how are you? Welcome to another edition of the Two Dudes Podcast. I am Rick. That is Kevin. And as usual, we got another good one for you. Man, we are so bad. We need Morgan Freeman to narrate us. What's up, Kevin? What's going on? Uh, you know, it's been a bizarre week. We'll just put it that way. Very bizarre. Um, especially in the sports world, which we will get to later. And uh, hopefully we'll be joined by Mr. Antoine Manning. We got a lot to discuss. Um, he hurt me. He hurt me deep. He beat me by 13 points in the fantasy league. I lost 99 to 112. Mm, room 112, where the players dwell. Well, if – let's put it this way. There was a lot of ifs. If Travis Kelsey didn't get knocked out, then maybe I would have got 12 more points. If Russell Wilson would have been able to play like Russell Wilson and not try to point north where the rest of his hand was going south, I would have got 12 points. So, you know, there's a lot of ifs. But that counts for grenades and horseshoes, so what can you do? It's just been a nightmare season. We will get into that later. Uh, first things first, how was your weekend and how's your week been going? Uh, weekend was typical. Work. Trying to hold on until March with this part-time job. Uh, oldest had a soccer game. Team didn't show on some real bullshit. How you go to – how you get an email from the league and it asks you, Due to homecomings happening, is your team going to show up Saturday? And you don't say anything. Then here we are, 5 o'clock afternoon, sitting here waiting, looking. No team show up. Mm. Just hella disrespectful. So then my child ended up helping some other team play. Then the last 10 minutes of the game, she decided she's done playing and sitting. I'm like, we could be gone by now. Why? So it, it was cool. Just chill. Watch the, the fight. Then Sunday just works. Um, and that was really it. You know, watch that half of that sorry ass Sunday night game. And that was it. There was a lot of sorry play in the NFL. All right. So in addition to that, I know you and I had talked mm, several days ago. And – I told you it was going to happen, and it has begun. You were out, and you had to show your vaccination card. Dumbest shit ever. Okay, so Sunday, my daughter, she likes to do the laundry. Some reason, she does it like her thing to do. So I don't argue with it. I let her do it, whatever. Take care of you and your sister's clothes. I'll wash mine whenever. But she wants to wash everybody's clothes. All right, cool, whatever. I stopped supervising it, let her do her thing. You know, she's 15. She should know what she's doing. She focused when she do stuff. I forgot she's still a kid at heart, though. Turns out, I guess, I want to say she overloaded the washer, basically. And I think she blew the power because, what a while, you know, the washer already is in my basement or whatever. Yeah. That little section went black. So, she wasn't popping or whatever. So, therefore, what was in the washer was in the dryer. Had to take it to the laundry mat. Because I, they mom tech could have came over there and washed. But I wasn't about to just sit there. That it took forever. So, I wanted to get multiple washers, dryers, get it going, get it done. Go to the damn laundry mat of all places and get stopped for my damn vaccination card. What the hell is going on to where... I gotta go to this overpriced laundry mat for one, and I gotta show this card to get in. Luckily, I have my card on me because I don't carry that damn thing. I just officially got my second one this past week. It's, it's I just, it felt real asinine. It's real asinine. Man, um, it, it is coming down to it. You will need that card in so many places. I guarantee you, over the next few months, it will start to surface. It's, it's just a fast becoming a way of life. Here's what's dumb about it. You look for the card, I show it to you. 
How do you know it's me? Oh, that comes later. I believe that once they start mandating these things, then they will start to try to mandate ways to identify you. But you get what I'm saying, though. Right, I do. It's, 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 it's so stupid. Yeah, so now my daughters have a picture of theirs in their phone to show. And I got mine. I got to get registered with a part-time job. And it's just, it's just dumb. It's real damn dumb. Okay. This topic here is a head scratcher. All right. We done, we done talked to R. Kelly to death. And just when you think there can't be any more, there's more. Since he's been on lockdown, since... Uh, he was uh, declared guilty back on September the 27th. Album sales have grown by 500% after this conviction. Um, what happened was he's seen double digit gains in streams and triple growth in sales. What the hell's going on, man? People know they want to listen, see if they can find something they may have missed that would have told him Told them that he was doing some dirt. People nosy as fuck trying to go back. Oh, if you listen to this one song, oh, I knew he was talking. I should have known it. You didn't know nothing. You ain't go know nothing. You fucking assuming. Leave the shit alone. He made good music. Everything. Oh, I can't listen to him. He was writing about a little girl. You don't know that. You don't know how his mind worked. You assuming just had something to talk about. Either like the music or get on. Like they say. Either shit on the pot or get the fuck on. One of the two. Which one is it going to be? Well, you know every dollar that he gets is going to the attorneys and uh, civil suits and all that. So, unfortunately, he's not going to see a dime of that. People are uh, paying his court fees. That's what they're doing. You know, this, this is what's so crazy about it. Let's cut all the bullshit aside. He could be rich tomorrow if he wanted to. He could be re-rich, to put it like that. If Tina Turner can sell her catalog for like, I mean, 50 mil or some shit like that. It is 50. We'll get to that next. Imagine what he could sell his catalog for. You know what? It's not even about the catalog. Um, because right now, I don't think anybody would, you know, buy anything because I think those sales will, will dwindle. Here's no. what I think he'll do. He could write a book when he gets out or prior to that, and that's how he's going to make money. If there's one thing I've learned about America, America is a very forgiving country. No. It, it, I, yes and no. reason why I say the catalog of sale, you go play I Believe I Can Fly tomorrow, who going to turn it off? Remember, he's selling this shit at the fucking Olympics. That song right there is going to get dollars. He has songs here, songs there that people don't deny that they'll want to listen to. Well, yeah, people will want to listen to it at parties. People will want to listen to it at events. And those are the songs that you can sell and put in movies and commercials. Go uh, Black I, now, Union. that's where I stop you. They won't be in movies. It won't be in commercials. It won't be on TV. Because you've got too many people in this cancel culture world, which we will also get to later, that will boycott it because it has an R. Kelly song in it. I disagree. I disagree on that because if Harvey Weinstein movies are still on Netflix. <laughs> ah, but he's the producer. You don't see him. You don't hear him. You see his name at the beginning of, and the end of every movie. You know you're watching a Weinstein feature. People are that shallow to where they will leave because of that. If they'll still see his movies, R. Kelly's song could be in a movie somewhere in the background making money. You can't tell me if you don't play Step in the Name of Love in a room full of black people, it ain't going to start dancing. Just certain uh, songs I'm not just, saying that. You're right about that. But you're also talking about pre-existing stuff. Harvey Weinstein will not produce anything now. R. Kelly cannot sell anything now. Pre-existing stuff? Okay, I got you. Future Harvey stuff, Weinstein not so much. Will still produce because he got fools like Jay Z that's buying shit from him. That I bet, some way, shape, or form, you look, you still go see his name on there. 
Hey, if he can pull that off, that is one of the Trumpiest Trump things I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, because they, you know, they, they, for Jay-Z and the team, he was supposedly a bought some, bought, I guess, like his company or some shit or whatever. Same way I'm sure Russell getting something on the back end from Def Jam still. I'm sure Harvey's probably still getting something too. So it's just certain people have the right people to make that money keep going for them by the way they set up them contracts. You may think you don't want, yeah, we got this with pennies on the dollar. Then you read that final print, oh, this motherfucker getting royalties, you know, through this way or whatever. It's kind of like, oh, that's one thing I learned from Shark Tank. You either want to give away royalties or a percentage of your company if you want them to invest. So don't think Harvey ain't getting something. That's true. Now, along those terms, I want to go back to Tina Turner mm -hmm. because she's selling her entire song catalog for an estimated $50 million to BMG. This includes her name, her likeness, image, and music. Now, to me, this is a genius move for both sides. She's been out of the game for several years. I, I can't see her making a comeback again or putting out an album again. She probably wants to live the quiet life somewhere. Now she's got an extra $50 million to do so. She can ride off into the sunset with that. While BMG, they can use her music in soundtracks, commercials, uh, documentaries. They can re-release her entire catalog if they want to now. And they can make that money back in CDs and streaming. So I think this is a win for both sides right here. I didn't like it when I first saw it. Well, first I thought she was already dead. So it was good to see she was still around. I, I thought she had, you know, thought she had fought the good fight and had died in Australia or some shit or whatever. And she gave her U.S. citizenship. Um... I only am okay with it because she's old as shit. So it's like you said, she ain't about to do nothing else. Unless they go will her out like Isaac Hayes before he died, she ain't about to do shit. She, ain't, she can't dance no more. She probably stomped hard and her ankle to break. So it made sense for her to do this deal. I just personally think that she undersold herself, her name, her likeness. 50 mil is a drop in the fucking bucket. When you got motherfuckers like the Dream, who sold his catalog for like 40 mil. And the Dream ain't an icon like Tina Turner. Yeah, he's a hit make writer, producer, and got some hit songs of his own. But Tina Turner, The Dream. Catalogs, sell for dinner the same? That makes no sense. So just BMG literally did a smashing grab on her old ass. And she probably owed the scene now. Don't have the right people around her. And all they saying is, you go die soon, we gonna be rich. And I get it. 50 million, you ain't gonna worry about your lifestyle no more. But it wasn't a good business move how it was done. Easily 25 mil got left on the table. You can't tell me Tina Turner couldn't go to somebody and say, my catalog, 75 is what I'm listening. Lowest I'll take is 65. You can't tell me somebody wouldn't give that to her. Just off the damn movie alone, she can get about 10, 15. So it's just, again, niggas not knowing they work, not having a good, good jewel around to make sure they get the best money they can get. And she left money on the table. Yeah, I said it. All right. This one, cancel culture has struck again, but this time they didn't win. All right, so you know about the Dave Chappelle thing, right? The Netflix special came on, mm -hmm. and we had, um, it's called The Closer, and there were some members of the, uh, I believe it was the trans community, tried to get it taken off. First of all, a Netflix, a Netflix employee tweeted that uh, it attacks the trans community. Uh, newsflash, people. Dave Chappelle is a comedian. And comedians make fun of people, all people. They spare no expense. That's what they do. That's what makes and it funny. That's There's the thing that upset them is Dave made fun of them for being mad at his baby on how 
the baby basically. Not saying he's ignorant to know, but this is a dude who had money that was shooting somebody in Walmart. And he made them look bad for going at the baby because they really had no reason to. Yeah, he made some comments, but he's he's from the rural south. He don't know. He has to be educated. So it just kind of put it in the forefront of everybody like, yeah, maybe we was tripping. So before everybody was like, turn on them, they went at day. But I give Netflix props. It's like, we ain't doing nothing. We staying put. I give them props for that. Yeah, I'm I mean. Subscribe one day. I mean, the, the whole cancel culture thing is just so far out of hand. And we've talked about it a couple of times on the show. I mean, it's just to the point where it's stupid. And I don't believe that anybody should be belittled or berated or anything. But remember, it's a comedian. It's comedy. If you can't laugh with it, why are you watching it? Because we're a culture of we don't want to be left out. We don't want to not be able to be in the conversation. We wouldn't be able to talk or have our little five seconds worth of fame discussing it. And that's the damn problem. See, that's what go back to school. We got to go back to, hey, dodgeball, you hit you out. Not no, oh, let them go back in. No, you get hit you out. And that's the problem. Now as adults, we don't want to be out. No, don't leave me behind. Should have been here. Should do what you're supposed to do. Like my part-time job. The way they cater to these old people is ridiculous. They tell them, if you want to do something, you got to sign up for it. These motherfuckers don't sign up. They just show up. So then they're just like, we didn't know all you guys wanted to do this. You didn't sign the sheet. Oh, we just figured we just show up. And what do they do? Okay, go ahead. That's the problem. We need to start enforcing things to where people won't act like that because they'll be used to it. Well, I tell you what, instead of folding to the uh, pressure, Netflix went the other direction, shut it down. Not only did they did they suspend the employees who, by the way, they tried to bust into a board meeting. <clears throat> that's the wrong thing to do. They also released a statement saying that uh, they will not, underscore, will not uh, remove the show. Netflix draws the line at hate and violence. And Chappelle's show promotes neither exactly he just made an observation from a comedic point of view but that just goes i got one for you i i just saw this the brown family i mean nicole brown's uh simpson sister mm -hmm. took offense to a joke that was wrote they said by michelle wolf that kim kardashian gave on saturday night live saturday she did a joke saying that her father introduced her to her first black person, and he was really a cut above everybody else. She took offense to that, saying that jokes like that shouldn't be shared about her sister. Did she mention her sister? Did she mention OJ's name? She just yeah. left it out there for you to think. Yeah. Society's just so butthurt about everything nowadays. It's just everybody got to cry about something. And crying is the key word. Bro, you mentioned at the top of the show the fight. Now, I'm one of the five people on the face of the earth who did not watch the fight. So I want your reaction. Okay. You didn't miss much. You know, everybody's like, oh, it was the greatest fight. It was the greatest fight. No, it wasn't. It was throwback to the Holy, not Holyfield, the, the George Foreman Ali days where it was dirty fighting. Now, Dante Wilder, he needs to learn to control his arms, get his punches on target. Because if he would have did that, he would have won. Um, Fury got saved by the bell twice when Wilder was getting in that ass. Fury went old slew Bush League. I'm not going to fight you for real. I'm going to hit you with a couple of punches. I'm going to sting you a couple of times. When you retaliate, I'm going to grab you. I'm going to headlock you. And I'm going to put my weight on you. So Wilder, you know, he's in shape, dude. But at the same time, he's like Tyson. He's not built to go 12 rounds. 
So if I put my 270 pound body leans on him for at least a third of every round, if not half the rounds, at some point you're gonna go ahead and uh, get start getting tired. And as you get tired, your arms gonna start dropping. And as they dropping, it's time for me to ring that bell. And that's what happened in the 11th round. Wilder was tired because the whole fight, all he did was lay up on him, grab him, headlock him, put his weight on him. Because he was losing through the first five, maybe six rounds. The seventh round, definitely eighth round, that's when he took over. So it was like, I can't even respect it. It was on some real bullshit. It, just, it wasn't boxing. You know, they wasn't, it just, um, got you in the headlock. I'm, I'm hitting you while I got you. I was like, that was just some real whole shit. Glad I didn't pay for it. I hated that I stayed up till 12 o'clock watching. I had to be at work the next day. But it definitely, the UFC I watched the week before was better. That's the sad part about it. UFC really is better than boxing right now, as far as heavyweight. But it just, it, I feel bad for Wilder, Dante, because he won the first fight. They called it a draw. He, act, he lost the second one. He legit got his ass whooped. The second one, Fury actually fought in the second one. The third one, he was giving Fury the business, but Fury just did his old, them old schools, 1970, 80 tactics of just leaning on the person. And that was it. I got tired of watching it. It was so damn boring. Now, I wouldn't call it 1970, 80 tactics because in the 70s and 80s, we still had real heavyweights. Yeah, but I'm saying something that would do the whole weight, lean on you, put your they body on you, whatever to tire you down. It's a yeah, throwback I to mean, old boxing. It is a throwback, but, you know, we had more fighters than brawlers in the early mm -hmm. days of boxing. Now there's more brawlers and holders now. And that's, a, that's Dante's problem. He's more of a brawler than a boxer. He needs to find a happy medium. I just feel bad for him. So now he got Fury on his on him as basically three L's, a draw and two losses. Yeah, that does kind of suck. Yeah, so his neck, then he goes, I'm a, Fury's such a great champion. He goes everywhere to fight everybody. And Anthony Joshua had lost. I forgot who he lost to. And he's, I'm pretty sure Fury's going to go fight him wherever he wants to fight. Fury doesn't hire anyone. He goes to fight everyone everywhere. I was like, man, if they don't get up out of here with that. <laughs> well, you know, they're trying to give him his props for what, what he did. So yeah. I guess I can get, get with that. 18 NBA players charged in the health care fraud scam. It's the NBA's health and welfare uh, benefit plan. And um, this past Thursday, 16 of them had already been placed into custody. Keep in mind, these are federal charges. So this means big time coming up if they're uh, guilty. They supplied false invoices uh, to fraudulent claims to get money for it. Um, out of the uh, 18 players, I know you'll know these three names. Uh, Glenn Davis, uh, Darius Miles, and Eddie Robinson. Those mm -hmm. are the most prominent ones that were in oh, this. Some other big names. I just I haven't seen the list of all 18 names. Check out how they got caught. The uh, ringleader was Williams. I forget his first name. Um, a player didn't pay Williams, who called pretending to be a healthcare administrator. And this was to get uh, an, an extra, um, this was to get the player uh, to contact them, to contact them to get the money. That's where it all went south for them. And oh, by the way, of all the charges that all 18 of them play, uh, face, Williams is uh, going to get an extra charge as he will be found guilty of uh, identity theft since he impersonated a healthcare worker. So, yeah, the feds don't play when it comes to this. I believe it was $3.9 in fake claims and $2.5 got paid out. So amongst those 18 players, you spread out uh, $2.5 mil. Some of these boys got some money 
And it looks like it's all getting ready to go back into the legal system for court fees and uh, some payback. It was clearly not worth it. They got some of them so tight to where they said some guys will be having dental work done. But per GPS, dental work was over there. He was over there playing basketball. Man. Just stupid. Very stupid. I mean, how do you know make so bad like Darius Miles? Stupid. He's legit. Him and Quentin Richardson had one of the best sports podcasts out there on basketball. Getting critical acclaim with the Players Tribune, which is critically acclaimed. Moving up the, you know, the the the, the ladder or whatever, you do some shit like this. I feel bad for Quentin Richardson. But now it's just like, what, what you can't put the show on ball. You know, what you gonna do now? Just stupid. It it is stupid. Um I don't even know what to say for these guys. I'm gonna follow this a little bit closer. Although I'm positive that ain't none of these guys gonna get out of uh some kind of charge or another. And because it's federal, like I said, uh, it's not a whole lot they can do about this one, bro. Well, they still gonna go to a little cupcake ass prison, so they ain't going. Oh, uh, you, you mean the country club? Yeah, they're going to Martha Stewart type shit, you know. Yeah. Rich man's prison. Gotcha. Yeah, they, they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going to San Quentin or nothing like that. You know, they ain't, they ain't going down there to break no rocks or nothing. You know, they go get the easy living. All right. So, fun stuff. You sent me a link. Uh, I believe it was uh, NFL icon Emmett Smith, and it showed uh, the league's procedure during the uh, time when he was in Dallas when he broke the record, I uh, believe when it came to uh, his uniform and his equipment, they were uh, heat sealing microchips into the uniform so that it would be, uh, so that it would not be fraudulently traded on the open market. And I believe he wore four different jerseys during that game. Yeah. And after the game was over, he said that he gave one to Jerry Jones he kept one for charity, and uh, he gave one to the Hall of Fame, and he kept the uh, one in which he broke the record himself for himself. And until I had seen that that you sent, I did not know that that's how the NFL kept track of these things. That's, that's pretty dope right there. They have a way of telling whether it's authentic, and I was impressed that Emmett wore – four different jerseys throughout the entire game. Usually players just wear one, sometimes two. Technology. No, there's technology out there we don't know about the people got their hands on. Definitely didn't know about that shit. All right. Um, let's talk fantasy real quick. Fantasy and picks. Uh, bro, I'm hurting. I'm hurting real bad. You're sitting at – I know you lost, but you're still sitting at three and two. Yeah, I'm still in the uh, top of the league. Just, you know, I'm, we're, we, we are polar opposites. You're top. I'm bottom. I've yet to receive my first victory of the season. I'm 0-5, and, and I lost to Tony, who won his first game of the season. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to win that. Yeah. So – the Toilet Bowl Championship goes to Tony. Um, I have – I've. it has been, what, four, maybe five years since I've been this bad in the league. Injuries just keep mounting up. When you Russell know, Wilson went two, down – Maybe three seasons you've been good. Don't, don't give yourself that much credit. No, nah, but usually I've been middle of the road. You start off 0-5, there's problems. I it's mean – I mean, still can turn around, though. He's if, going if free. You take away Travis Kelsey and my kicker, everybody else on my starting lineup has is different now than in week one. That's bad. Because, uh, you know, you want to have a good record before bye week starts. That's when the gambling starts. And bye week starts next week or this week. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you still got time. 
That window yeah, ain't fully closed. It's not fully closed, but I have to pull off a hell of a run. I mean, I mean, you probably take one more L, it's probably a done deal. Yeah. You just donate money to charity. Right. I'll tell, lot, I'll tell to say hi to you. Thanks. Now, that's where you can smile. Here's where you can frown. Picks. Thanks. You took Stop. it on the ass in picks. Yeah. Uh, you've got 50 total wins so far. And by the way, the uh, leader has 58, so that's not too bad. But you're ranked number 20 out of 29 teams. Yeah, was, so some of them came back to bite you. Football, period. It was an ugly past weekend in football. From um, fantasy to picks. Unless, just, you, unless you knew how to pick, that would be me. Again, we are polar opposites. Remember last week I was 14? I have jumped up to sixth place in picks. I am six out of 29 with a mere 53 points. I'm only three points better than you, but I'm 14 points higher than you yeah. in the standings because that many people are log jammed up there. So anything can happen. Yes, yeah, so, well, picks is always a slippery slope. I don't ever worry about it until it gets toward the end. Like, being eight games down, I still could possibly catch. If I get to where I'm double digits, then you go lose me because I'm not catching up. So I still got a chance. Oh, yeah, anything can happen. a little glimmer, but still got a chance. Anything can happen. And like you said, there were so many games that we didn't see coming, not just last week, but this past week. Um, I had Buffalo, but who knew Kansas City was going to be that bad? Um, I told you they was going to lose. I picked Buffalo to win. Well, yeah, but we all thought it was going to be somewhat close or competitive. The, the weather, the delay, all that set you up for failure. Because you done lost that momentum, you done lost that angst. Then Elvis Hilaire getting hurt, Travis getting hurt, Tyreek getting hurt. You see when it was next man up, all those so-called I'm ready to be number two receivers – where the fuck were they? Exactly. Yeah, um, so. Look at um, Carolina. They had it. They had that game won and let it slip away. Yep. You know. Hey, was, look at last night's game. Baltimore was cooked. Came yeah. back and won. Indy let that game slip away. Although I had Baltimore. Indy should feel like trash. That makes our loss against Baltimore look that much better. Yeah, we gave up rushing to Jackson. Y'all let his nine throwing ass throw over 400 yards on you. First time ever since he's been in the league. That's true. He still holds the ball like this and throw. Like he in fucking Pee Wee football. And y'all let him throw for down there 500 yards. Man. Fuck out of here. So... <sighs> What's wrong with the Chiefs? Um, as like I told y'all, I've said before, Spags' defense only works for a limited time. And his time's up. He needs to go. So basically what you're saying is Spags' defense is like Toyota Thon. It's for a limited time only. Yeah. I mean, you've seen it with the Giants. You see where he goes. It only like works for so long. So he needs to go. It's time for a new system. And we need to focus on defense. We need to – We offense is fine. The Lions go get it together. We got enough linemen. Just give them time to jail. We need to focus on the defense. We need – every team needs a dog. We don't have that – Frank Clark, I thought, was that dog, but he can't stay healthy. We don't have a dog on defense. Everybody needs that – that Brian Dawkins, that Ray Lewis, that, uh, that Deion Sanders, that, that one is going to come to you get in your face and get you hyped. Tyran's that, but at the same time, he's not that. And Sorensen, Dirty Dan's my guy, but it may be time for him to go to the bench and let a younger player start. Well, I'm it's surprised just, that you say that Honey Badger is, but he isn't. But I'm more surprised that you, about you and your, your boy Dan Sorensen. Because to me, Sorensen has been more or less opportunistic. He happened to be in the right place at the right time to make some plays. I don't see him going out to specifically make plays. And that's the difference. He's made plays, 
The thing with Dan is he spends too much time looking in the, you know, to make it like a run stop or something versus worrying about coverage. That's why he got burnt twice because he's too busy watching instead of seeing what's going on. Then you look up and just, you ain't going to catch, you ain't fast enough. Done deal. And that's why I say he's not a dog because he reads instead of reacts. You got to react if you're a dog. You got to know where you're going and get there. And that's it. I agree. And I am not going to just put it on the Chiefs defense, although that defense is pretty sorry. Offense needs some help, too. And it ain't just the line. It is not the offense is fine. They've shown what they can do. Everybody talking about Mahomes' his interceptions. He's a slinger. You just didn't realize it because we was beating teams' asses. He came from a spread offense in college. That mentality doesn't change in the NFL unless you chase Daniels. You just career back up. You say he made the Chargers team? That was mind-blowing. And he was like the third quarterback, and I think he's number two. Yeah. But that's here nor there. The offense is fine. When your defense is fucking up, you're going to be pressed. So, therefore, you're going to have these turnovers. You're going to do everything you're doing because you don't think the defense is going to do anything. So you feel like you have to play defense with your offense. And everybody's talking about, oh, Tampa done figured them out. Tampa done figured them out. If Tampa figured us out, we only scored nine on Tampa. We're averaging about 30 a game. So, Tampa, if Tampa figured it out, then you motherfuckers ain't doing it right. Because if you were, we'd only average nine, six, seven points. We still putting up legit points. This bubble game was the only game we didn't put up legit points. That's only because of the damn rain delay. If the rain delay didn't happen, we'd have put up points. But at the same time, like in that Buffalo game, Tyreek come across the middle, boom, what do you do? Intercept him to the house. Is that Mahomes' fault? No. The, the, um, what is the, um, Charger game, uh, the receiver, wide open, Mahomes, throws you a pass. Catch it, you into the end zone, you down at the one. You bumble it, gets interception. That Mahomes' fault? No. You got to catch what's coming to you. You can't say I'm a number one or I'm a number two. You don't catch it. Y'all mad because Travis getting the ball? He catch the motherfucker. Catch the ball. So it's just like some I think because it can't really happen so hard. It's one of the things where you gotta get out your own way. Stop being so lackadaisical. Get hungry again. Niggas ain't hungry. They ain't got paid. They ain't hungry no more. That's the worst thing with an out with an athlete. A lot of them when they get paid, they don't have that hunger anymore because it's been too easy for them. And that's how not only that, time. not only that, they got paid and they already got a ring. Exactly. Then paid, they got a ring in the record book, going to the AFC Championship three times in a row, ain't been done since Buffalo, and been favored to win the Super Bowl the past four years, basically. Saw yesterday, yesterday's the first time somebody outside of Kansas City has been favored to win the Super Bowl, and they put it on Tampa because Tom Brady had that big game. Yeah, um, this doesn't just hurt Kansas City for this year. I think it hurts them for next year, too, because you clearly need a couple more new receivers. And once you get them, they will need to learn the system in jail. You know, we're, we have receivers like Pringle. He's under contract. Robinson, we're probably going to let go. Hardman, we may bring back. We got the receiver. That's not even the issue. That's You can get receivers curl routes or slants and make it successful. They just got to run the route. It's I hate to I say it. To- I hate to say it, but if you keep Hardman, you keep him on kick returns, you want to put him on offense, you can run that reverse out of the backfield. That's it. Don't throw him any more passes. He's not oh, going to get not bad. He just When he actually catches and turns up field, he's not bad. But he's too busy on that backyard street football. I got to catch it and turn around and look at you. Uh, 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 and then take off. That No, just catch the ball, turn up field. That's all you got to do. Now, this is where – but see, this is the Andy effect also. A lot of players get comfortable. They Andy. They know do this in the third. This is where you kind of – you need that – that when I coached soccer, it was three of us. It was me, Tim, and Ryan. Tim was the clipboard, had the plays. 
Ryan was the pushover. I was the dog. You have to have that. And I think that's what we 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 need a, a coach like that is gonna get off in their ass. We just ain't had it. You know, because like yeah. Randy, he only I mean, Andy's only gonna do so much. But you know, it's cool, it is what it is. It's it's gonna get figured out sooner versus later because uh we got we got a lot of money that we can uh, let go of to get to improve. Yeah, so it just no. need this time. Now that you mentioned that, and before we go into the next subject, let's bring on Tony Manning, because we got a lot to talk about, bro, and we got limited time to do it. But you came on at the right time. Uh, we had already just talked fantasy and picks, but I want to go back to fantasy to you. First things first, Tony, congratulations. Uh, your team beat my team, you bastard. Man, don't congratulate me and that raggedy ass team. I got it, man. <laughs> I'm just glad we can get somebody. Well, yours is you less raggedy than team. mine. Yours is less mm -hmm. raggedy than mine. We had the same damn record, zero and four. So and now we don't. You got a one in front of yours. I still got a donut. I'll but take it. I'll take I, it. I, I'm going to try to beat the hell out of my next opponent, who is Supreme Team. <laughs> oh, shit. Not oh shit! I ain't even paid no attention I'm to his to team whatsoever. Uh, he's he's got a nice little squad there, you know. I, I'm gonna need my homes to you know make a few more interceptions this year, uh, this week. And and as you came on, we were talking about the Chiefs. So, in your opinion, what's wrong with the Chiefs right now? Um. It's hard to sustain that type of success in the NFL, man. I mean, a team can be terrible one year and great the next year. It happens all the time. I mean, the boys done had a three-year run. They're due for a down season. Here's the funny thing. The Chiefs could lose four more games, right, and, and still be, what, 10 and 7? Yeah. Yeah. And get a wild I mean, that, card. Now, well, I mean, maybe not a wild card, but, I mean, it'll still end up being a winning season. I mean, if we take a dip back and, and, and don't make the playoffs at all because of the defense, it's not like it's going to be a trend uh, for many, many years of not making the playoffs because as long as you got Patrick Mahomes, the same way with Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers, they know worst-case scenario with him – you're going to have a winning season, and he's probably going to get you in the playoffs. So if they do, if this is if this is that year where it's down, then it's just that down year. They'll, they're still going to end up with a winning record, though. Yeah, I, I, It's hard to put Super Bowl aspirations on a team from the very jump. I mean, we always do that, and I believe they still have Super Bowl aspirations. But – What's wrong with them right now, man, is first of all, they turn the ball over much and the defense ain't playing inspired at all. So maybe maybe when this team feels like their back is against the wall, they'll beat the teams that they're supposed to. Like they play Washington this week. They should throttle Washington. Yeah, you but know. if you score 30 points, but you give up 35, you still yeah, take I mean, the deal. Yeah, I mean the defense can't stop nobody. I mean they're just they're not they're not playing inspired. At, they're not playing inspired at all because I don't think the coach is giving them anything to be inspired about. They're not doing any any all out blitzes. They're not trying to put pressure on these quarterbacks. I mean you're not you're not gonna get pressure with just now, the front four in this league. You gotta have some special motherfuckers up front to do that, and everybody ain't got Aaron Donald. Well, you say that they're not playing inspired football, and I know before you came on, Kevin made a good point. You already got the contract. You already got the ring. Um, at some point, is it really the coaching, or do you need to just man up and say, I've been doing this. I need to do it again. I think it's just human nature. They just they they're just too relaxed to repeat and get back. It's like they're, they're tired. They know the grind it takes. They've done it for the last three years and went to back to back Super Bowls. I mean, it's a reason that the Patriots didn't win every you know back to back all the time. It all, it would always be a year or two in between. So I think it's literally just the players are tired. 
I think they're tired. I think they Super played Bowl so hangover? much. Super Bowl hangover? Yes, absolutely. Last to, for the last two Super Bowl hangovers. You know I mean, what? Tommy makes a good point. I think it's just tired, me of, um, When LeBron was in Miami, and I think when um, they finally, when his snow when LeBron's streak finally ended, are going to championships, he had did an interview and he was like, I hate that I lost, but this is my first time being home and I'm not in, in the playoffs and I'm not in the Olympics and I'm just actually resting for a chance. So it, it, that's because you think about it, two Super Bowls and three AFC championships. That's Should have been three Super Bowls. There. Well, and think about this. Okay, so Tampa Bay, they're hot right now. They're going to have a run of about two or three years in the NFC where they're going to be the NFC representative, you know, with Tom Brady and that group that they got. And they're going to eventually falter for a season or get tired. You know, they just went to one last year. They didn't even get close with Jameis. Damn, look at Seattle. Think about it. The Seahawks, them, when they got Russell. It, yeah, um, Russell's good, but. Russell ain't Patrick Mahomes. I'm saying, well, they went on a run for a minute, like you're saying. And then that was that defense. They had that good defense. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think just the players, I think they're tired. I think they're playing uninspired. Um, I think uh, Spagnola, has, he hasn't done anything creative. He's not giving them guys anything new. I mean, you keep trotting goddamn Sorensen and Neiman out there. Uh Week after week, and, and and them motherfuckers can't tackle shit. They can't tackle me. I, I'm pretty sure I can break Neiman's tackle. I'm pretty sure. I might be able to break that motherfucker's tackle with no pads on. All right, we talked about what's wrong with the Chiefs. What's wrong with the Broncos? Ain't nothing wrong with the Broncos. Broncos got a great defense, and I think their offense is uh, is doing pretty deep. I mean, when you got Teddy Bridgewater, you only going to go so far with him. But um, lost two in a row. Um, I think it's, it's, it's Teddy Bridgewater is a 500 quarterback. Yeah, he'll throw a pick, and then he'll turn around and throw a nice touchdown pass. You know, he ain't going to throw the ball uh, no more than 25 yards down the field, though. What do you think? Wrong? Yeah, what, I mean, why why you think Teddy is getting shuffled around now? People are start are starting to realize that Teddy don't throw that ball too far. He's accurate. He'll throw a lot of short passes. He'll complete a lot of short passes. Uh, he ain't gonna throw for three twenty five too many times. So he'll complete twenty five passes and be like two hundred and forty yards. All right. So are the Chargers all that, or is it just smoke and mirrors? Nah, the Chargers is real, man. Chargers got a lot of talent on that team. And they're playing inspired ball. They believe in that kid, man. The same way this group of Chiefs did when Patrick Mahomes came in, they turned it over from Alex Smith. They played inspired ball, man, and went on a hell of a run for three years. The Chargers can replicate the same thing because Herbert is that type of talent. He's got the type of arm talent. He may not be as magical as Patrick Mahomes, baby. You know, just some pull some shit out of his ass, but that boy got a cannon and he can he can hit some targets. He got some good fucking targets to throw to. That's one. He's yeah. got some he's got some yeah. great targets to throw the ball to. Really does. And that boy Eckler out the backfield, listen, he can dump that mug uh, three yards out there to him and and and, and sit back and get a 20 yard gain out of well, they got that nice offensive line too. They got they got a got a bunch of hogs in front of them. Yeah, yeah. They ain't even really trying to run the ball too much. They putting it on that boy's arm, and he's delivering. And that's the best thing to do because if you get into the playoffs, then all you gotta do is hand off. Nobody will see it coming. Hey, the guys, yeah. the guys got talent. The defense is decent. They got to stay. The thing is, Chargers always had to deal with a lot of injuries. If that team stays healthy this year. I hate to say it, but the Chargers might win the AFC West this year. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping they don't because let's go to the second-place team in the division. What's wrong either. with the Raiders? I mean, you know what's wrong with the well, Raiders. We'll get, to, we'll get to that former head coach Shit. in a second. No, that's what's wrong with the goddamn Raiders. <laughs> rubber, you rubber, rubber, what's going on with Gruden? Rubber lips and uh, uh, 
and and queers and faggots. That's what's going on with the Raiders. All right, let's go there because yesterday, me and Kevin touched on it. I'm drinking yet today, man. Are we gonna get to that? Because that 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 ties into the Raiders and my reward uh, next month when we play. I I knew you was gonna bring that shit up. All right, um, listen, it's great. I think I really think we're gonna win now. When that first email came out, I'm like, no, nah, I agree with Tony Dungy. I don't think he's a racist. I stand behind him. I even told that to Kevin. And then later on, I found out I'm looking at my stuff. Gruden resigns. Gruden resigns. What? They found more emails, homophobic, homophobic slurs, misogynistic uh, stuff. It's like, wow, this man is really not who we thought he was. Go. Time out, Richard. Time out, Richard. Time out. I, I, can I just correct you on one thing real fast? And I'll yeah, let you go ahead. Go ahead. They didn't find anything. Somebody crazy. turned them to this. Somebody had it out for Gruden and gave those emails. Y'all want they me to tell y'all who it was? They didn't find shit. Y'all want me to tell you who it was? Bruce Allen, former Raider coach, sent it to Mark Davis. Bruce Allen was the GM. GM I don't, or whatever. I don't, Sent it to Mark Davis. I don't think he did it. I know oh, those they emails. Reported he did it. They, the emails were addressed to him. With, why would he hold them emails on Gruden? Oh, yeah, time? they were sent to him. But then he's the one that sent them to Mark Davis. What I'm saying, they ain't said who sent them to him, but they like he's the one that sent those to Mark Davis. And that's when Davis, you know, that's when Eric, that's what got the ball rolling. Somebody had it out for John Gruden. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't you don't sit on that shit all this time, and then all of a sudden just drop that when someone said this man at that time was doing Monday Night Football, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. You on okay. TV? Okay. So he wasn't working for the league; he was working for ESPN at the time. Uh and he sent those emails to somebody, and somebody held on to them motherfuckers because they said, I can use this shit against this dude at some point. Why else would you hold the why else would you have those emails? And why would you turn them into the league now? Why Damn. Not? Wait till the Raiders get good and then just like chop them back down again. That's the thing. Once you get high, but when I'm the, you down. Okay, so the person that did it, what's in it for them if that's the case? I have no idea. Why 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 punish the franchise? So do you have something against the Raiders or do you have something against John Gruden? I think it's both. Yeah. When it's all said and done, it's going to come out to be somebody that was on Gruden's staff that probably got fired unjustly and he got a hold of those emails. Maybe unjustly. It ain't got to be unjustly, you know, for somebody to do some shit like that. Motherfuckers get fired justly all the time and act a fool. Yeah. Now, it's, now it's, it's gonna be something like that. Let's roll I'm back. Fine. Let's roll back, though. I mean, whether it be just or unjust, Gruden had no business sending anything like that out. Absolutely not. But I tell you one thing: when he fuck, when he became no good for them owners' money, he had to go. See, it was okay when the email just came out about De- was it Demaris Smith? Yeah, that email was fine. Because see, but when Goodell's email went out, and then right uh, when you talked about that money, man, when you talked about Goodell, you was in trouble. That's and you Ryan will notice Clark this on uh, Ryan Clark said on his his uh, podcast, where he was like, "For all you blacks out there that watch football, don't think he got fired, but he resigned because of us. It had nothing to do with us. They can make comments about us. It was everything else he said that he had to step out." Now I want y'all I'm to like, take notice of this. Point. I want y'all to take notice of this. Davis could have went in the office at any point and fired him. He did not. You notice how Gruden resigned. Here's the thing. We fire him. You're on the hook for that $60 million because that's in his contract. Yeah, you but force I'm him to resign, sure. you don't owe him a dime. Yeah, and he did resign. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing about that, per Adam Shepard at halftime last night, the league was so far up the Raiders' ass watching this situation. Davis only had so much time to do something. So Gruden did save him by going ahead and resigning because the league pretty much let it be known, if you don't do something, we go do something. 
Well, they didn't. He didn't save him at all. Mark Davis was gonna fire him. He's he's one of those thirty two billionaires. Yeah. He was gonna fire him regardless. He yeah. grew no, became no longer good for business. Yeah. And, and this is why I told you yesterday, Kev, that it was a win win for both. We're off the hook for the sixty million by him he's resigning. It he looks better for Gruden three, four years from now when he wants to come back into the league and do something or another. No, now, not, now we'll get to whether or not he's done or not. We will get to that. But in his mind at the time, no matter what, this is better than the outright firing. I'll because, put it to you like this. Pete Rose got a better chance of getting to the Hall of Fame than Gruden got coming back. Right now I have to agree with you. But – Remember when I told you this is a very forgiving society? Look in, just look at Trump. Look at all the things that man has done. And he's still about to run for president again? Really? And, and people, want to, people want to what talk about got, Gruden. Huh? What else he got to do? Yeah. But, I'm, but that's what I'm though, saying. You know, as, as you know, taken from Jerry Jones, that's America's sport football. So America ain't happy with with uh, Gruden right now. Gruden got to go hide, hide, and hide some more. Yeah. And then hopefully, maybe I say about five, eight years, take a job with Fox. You got to take a job with a distant network <laughs> and maybe get pulled in. And he gonna be on crazy. Fox Fox College Saturday. <laughs> you got to be on Fox Sports Thirty Five. <laughs> no, they so bad. He's gonna he be the sideline go reporter. They need they need to make his ass go call uh black college football games. That's what they need to do with him. Oh wow. <laughs> Can you Maybe imagine Gruden doing Grambling State? Man. That's what they need to do with him. Go do that for a while. He got to but, do it's got for him to come back in before five years, it's gonna be the grandest of the grandest gestures. No, nah, well, he won't be coming back. Buddy, that's it. He's been canceled. Do y'all understand? But, but here's what the thing. Is? Do, do you think? Canceled. Do you think that he's just racist or just stupid? Both. both. Tell me why you say both. Everybody got a little racism in him. I don't care who you are. Everybody got a little, some way, shape, or form. You got some racism in you. I'm not a racist. I love you, of. niggers. <laughs> and for him to say that, that you, you might have something people. against Asians, though. Yeah, I was in a dark place. Man, what the hell ever. Yeah, I think that was a lot of backtracking and bullshit right there. The nigga had a job at ESPN calling Monday Night Football. How was he in a dark place? And you had fucking quarterback club. Everybody was coming to you out of college working with you, but you in a dark place. Man, go somewhere with that bullshit. Hey, look, there is no coming back. Time there of death? No <laughs> hey, there, time there's... of death? 805 last night. <laughs> but there is no organization in the NFL that is going to touch him after that. They can't. The NFL has spent all this money about diversity in racism. We're in this together. He coaching a team with a gay dude. Like, he, but he it, that's, that's why I think that it, he can because think of how many people came down on Michael Vick. He ended up back in the league He's got that's a job on Fox. That's dogs. That's that's listen, yeah, that's that's not not the head coach of a of a of a franchise. Michael Vick was labor shit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. And he went to jail, so that, that's different. So why does Urban Meyer still have a job? What did because he do wrong? He's at a strip club. Because it's Florida, baby. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's Florida, baby. He didn't. Urban Meyer didn't do anything illegal. He just got recorded. That's all. Well, racism is illegal, either. Either. so you know he, he, he didn't do anything illegal. But his wife ain't happy. Yeah, he just go get a divorce or go buy a you know, bull of Kobe. They go get this uh, ten carat diamond he, ring. He ain't gonna do that. Yeah, he he ain't getting no divorce. He too far in the game for that. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna cost him a pretty penny. He'll be urban minor. Yeah. <laughs> now the, the the question to you, Richard, and then. I want to I want to have Tony talk about the fight. Do you think the Raiders are gonna have because they said the locker room was split when when everything happened? Are y'all gonna have a hangover from it, or are they gonna come together? We've already had, had our hangover. Ass coach now. We've already had our hangover. That was the Bears game. You can see their heads clearly wasn't in the game. 
Clearly. That was before everything else came out, though. Oh, I think they're better now. Here's why. You don't have that cancer in the locker room with you. When you have a coach that you don't believe in and he's talking rah, rah, whatever, you're like, yeah, sure, okay. Your head ain't in the game. They've had a chance to wake up this morning, do their thing, get the game plan installed for the next game. New coach that you already know because he's the interim. He's going to be handling things. <clears throat> this is going to do one of two things. It's either going to galvanize everybody and they're going to pick up where they left off two, three weeks ago, or this season's over. And I think that this team has shown that they will put it together because you saw when they started off 3-0, and no matter who you interviewed, they all had one constant thing they always said. This team is like a family. But and when you have players team, talk though. about that, they have a way of rallying to each other. And I think that's yeah, what they're going to do. But what happened with families when daddy go to jail? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. Daddy got, daddy got, up next when, when daddy go to jail, daddy you got to hold it down for the rest of the family. But that's, true. that's, that's, people that's, people that's, that's my thing, up. though. People got to step up. Can I really line up next to when I know you supported him and I didn't? So it's like the inner bickering is what I'm saying. I don't yeah, know. No, I don't. Things. I don't think. I don't think that's going to be a problem. And I think it's actually. Here's why I think it's going to be better. You know how much pressure Carr was under by his own head coach week in and week out, looking it over his shoulder. Imagine it how Carr can play free now. Coach didn't want him. Imagine how free Carr can be now. Dude is under pressure, and he throws for four thousand yards in the first three games. Imagine what he can do for the next three games. He don't give a fuck. He's going to get ready to get that contract extension. He can just gunsling it. Trust me. That's interesting. That is interesting. Are they going to sign Carr now? Or the new – Here's here's the thing. If we look at coaches, if, if you promote the interim, if they have a decent season and you promote the interim, they might keep Carr. They go out and get somebody – I won't say they are, but if they get B enemy, B enemy wants his own guy. So Carr is as good as gone. He's probably going to want to install his own type of offense and everything. Byron Leftwich might keep Carr. That's middle of the road. That would be so, your best bet because he was a quarterback coach before he became a coordinator. So he could work with Carr. I mean, look what he did with Brady. I think Byron Leftwich is ready to be a head coach. Byron Leftwich has been ready for at least yeah. the last few years. Yeah, I think he is. He's I think ready. I think he's right where the enemy was two years ago. Two Two years ago, B enemy should but have been on another team, head coach. He I got kicked around. I think he's been blowing interviews on purpose. Yeah, he wants he wants Andy Reid's not going Andy anywhere anytime says. soon. If you want a job, strike Jeez. while the iron's hot. No, nah, I th I think Reid is gonna be done in the next two years. I agree you with think so? on that. Yeah, 2023 will be when we had to drive here, that'll be Andy's last year. I think Andy's gonna be done in the next couple of years. And if and, and if I was being me being me in his role and his shoes, I wouldn't go anywhere. Golden ticket. I I'd I'd, I'd hitch my wagon to, to Patrick Mahomes. Here's so, what I don't want Davis to do. Don't go to any college getting it head coach. That that's the death nail right there. College yeah. coaches are not Pete Carroll was the last college coach that was ready for the NFL. Period. All right. And that's well, only right because now, he was an NFL coach before he went to USC. Luckily for you, right now, Urban Meyer is helping. Him. Yeah. <laughs> what about him to stay away from college? Well, no. What about Matt Rule in Carolina? Damn. Good point. And you are there to see it happen, too. Didn't you see that dismantling last week? Yeah, People I mean, have figured him out. Dallas, was, they figured him out. Dallas, man. Of, 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 of course, Dallas was going to run them boys in the ground. They're not on that level yet. Before a coach in his second year. Now Dallas played the Giants last week. This past week, I'm talking about just Sunday, as in two days ago, they who lost again. To, who did they lose to? I mean, uh, still, was, I got to think about it, but they was up and then let it slip away. Yes, yes, they did. But I'll tell you this: still, in his second year, he's further along than people expected him to be, and he just done got a retread this year from the Jets. If you're going to go to college, get Harbaugh. That's what you do. I wouldn't want – I don't know if I'd want him, man. Why? 
He took the Niners to a Super Bowl. He he can motivate a team. Harbaugh might work in Vegas. Harbaugh might work in Vegas. I don't think. You know what? If they came calling, I'd run it. I'd run away from Michigan. I'd be out. Yeah. If Davis came calling, I'd be out if I was Harbaugh. But I don't know if Davis likes him like that. I I, I mean, the one person that Davis did like had to resign the other day. So, shit, what can you do? All right, let's go to the fight. Iron Tony Dungy, I guess. He ain't coming out of retirement. No, he ain't. He's loving that broadcast booth, and I ain't mad at him. Get paid the same amount of money, no pressure. Sitting next to Rodney uh, Harrison. What's his name, Rodney Harrison? Yeah, Rodney Harrison. The man who's going to hold his own umbrella. I need that kind of money. <laughs> I don't know that, dude. That's some player shit on the sideline. Like, yeah, bitch, I don't, I don't get wet or hold the umbrella. PTI had a whole discussion on whose arm was that. Somebody going to say, that was Susie Colbert. I was like, they stupid. <laughs> All right, so hey, who's the year, Tony? What do you think of the fight, Dirty? I know you watch Rachel Nichols shit because she ain't got no more jobs on ESPN. She just collecting a check right now. She dead weight. Oh. Oh, she about to go to Fox. Maybe. Uh, the fight, I mean, shit, Deontay Wilder got his ass beat. That's it. I mean, it is what it is. That dude, he, he can't. No, let me tell you what. He fucked up after the first two rounds when he stopped punching him in the gut. I mean, yeah. you had the man's gut red as all get out in the first two rounds, and he had no answer for it. Deontay Wilder did not have the patience to continue with that attack to soften his body up. He knocked his shit outside of his damn trunks. like, And he mm-hmm. never went back to it after the second round. He instantly started doing that head hunting, that one-two shit. And that's what got his ass knocked out. You know, some you can train a motherfucker to do something all the time. You can try to train old habits but when you a boxer man old habits die hard how many heavyweight fighters do you know have changed their fighting style when they were 41 and oh with like 40 knockouts you know what i'm saying how do you go you don't change he's in he's incapable of changing his style he was always gonna go in there and try to just go for the, the right hand the big shot he spent all that time in training camp working out. That's all the fuck that was. Because if you go out there in the street fight, instincts are going to take over. You're going to do what you know you do best. If you know I got this move where I grab this motherfucker by the head and try to pull him down and knee him, you're going to do that shit. Regardless of what boxing gym you've been in, how you've been punching the heavy bags, who's in there talking to you, when you standing in that ring, man to man, you got them gloves on, you're going to do what the fuck you did to knock 40 other motherfuckers out. True. You're right. You're right. Just, that, just that, but that shit wasn't going to work with Tyson Fury. He had a game plan. He dropped that shit in two rounds, and the rest is history. The rest What's is that? history. What's Nobody. that Mike Tyson used to say? Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Here's the thing. He would have been fine because he, he would have slowed Tyson Fury down. He would have took some of them steam, you know, some of that steam off of them punches. Yep. Tyson Fury's a big boy. That, that man's punches hurt. They're going to hurt you. You got to take some steam off of that. He never, a man showed you his stomach and you decided for 11 rounds, well, no, you did the first two rounds. So for nine rounds, you were just going to start punching at his head. Horrible game plan. So, with while with that fight happening and everything, is his career done, or does he just go fight Joshua next? Wilder, Wilder ain't get, who's who Wilder? Yeah, Wilder just if he fights anymore, man, it won't it won't be for the belt. Uh, you know, he'll fight somebody like Andy Ruiz. But I'm saying because Joshua don't have a belt no more. Remember, he lost a week prior. No, no, he's they already got the automatic uh rematch with that. Him and him oh, and okay, okay. Are going to again. He's going to probably beat Usyk the second time so they can go ahead and do the uh Joshua Fury fight. 
that's the only fight left to make because I don't want to see Fury fight Usyk because he's going to beat his ass. There's no reason for him to fight Deontay Wilder anymore. The only fight to make is Fury Joshua, but that's if Joshua gets past Usyk. He can very well get his ass beat by Usyk again. Yeah. And then you don't get Fury Usyk. The, the, the unification for the heavyweights is coming. <clears throat> it's coming. It is whether whether it's Joshua or Usyk, one of those two are going to fight Fury, Deontay Wilder or anybody else. Here's the thing: everybody else below De Deontay Wilder can't beat Deontay Wilder. Okay. So there's no other fights to make. Fury, Usyk, Joshua. Some combination of that has to happen. Has happened, yeah. Has it happened? That's the only way it's going to get unified. Nobody else matters in the heavyweight division. You got some young up and comers, but they're going to have to go through Fury. And if we get this far with it, and they don't unify the heavyweight championship, man, then boxing is going to piss me the fuck off. Oh, wow. There you have it. <laughs> All right, let's backtrack our real Larry, quick. Our, our Larry Merchant has spoke. <laughs> <laughs> what you drinking? Oh. Plan to share that with you, my brother. Tonight's commentary has been brought to you courtesy of nice. Remy Martin. Remy, that BSOP. Yeah. BSOP for the OG. I ain't uh, mad at you. I definitely ain't mad at you. We've seen that many a times on 76 and Terrace. <laughs> and it's a Tuesday night in Charlotte, North Carolina, nigga. So you need it. <laughs> so. so What's ahead, the, I did like the fight, though. I will tell you this: I did, I did enjoy the fight. The whole fight card wasn't bad overall. I watched yeah. it from start to finish. I enjoyed the fight. It was, it was boxing. It was entertaining. It was, it wasn't these bum ass matches that they be trying to sell. Yeah. That was a that was a pay per view event. That was a pay per view boxing event. Uh, they deserved that night. All, all the money that they made, the draw that they made, the pay per view, they earned it that night. Because them boys, yeah. them heavyweights, went to eleven rounds and they didn't cheat us out of shit. Is any ain't nobody saying nothing about there being problems with the fight or the fight fix or the, the no, ref is doing? You know what I'm saying? Them boys went in there and bang, and Fury beat his ass again. Now, just sticking with the heavyweight division, what is boxing it? getting better or worse to you? It's getting worse because they're not giving us the, the fights. Like, why are we still waiting on Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence? Why? I've given up. I've stopped waiting. I've given up. Do I, these boys want to unify? And I, listen, boxing done got to the point where you got a Mexican dude, a badass Mexican dude, Canelo Alvarez, just jumping around from weight class to weight class, ass, kicking people's asses and taking belts and getting lineals and championships. Like, what the fuck is going on here? How is this motherfucker winning in three, four weight classes? Like, what are we doing here? Boxing and, making itself a joke. Oh, I mean, just put the fighters in there with the belts against each other. You know, against each other. You got to. I, see, just, I think that sort of answers people. my next tell question. Is I'll ask you, uh, boxing or US, UFC? Oh, I'm still a boxing fan. I don't even watch it. I'm leaning toward UFC after watching the two weeks ago pay per view. It was I pretty just, entertaining. Okay, Kev, just, tell me why you're UFC. Tony, tell me why you're boxing. Well, right now UFC just they they not running from each other. The names are fighting each other. And they beating the shit out of each other. Like Tony said, with boxing, you waiting years on top of years for certain fights. Then when it finally happened, you don't care no more. That's true. Tony? Well, for me, I'm a boxing purist. Uh, I grew up watching boxing, the sweet science of boxing. I uh, did a little boxing myself uh, a while back. So it's always been more intriguing to me. UFC, I'm not... It's... it's I like UFC, but boxing, you got to be bad with just these hands. You can't be grabbing motherfuckers and putting them in the headlock and elbowing motherfuckers and kneeing them and, and, and grappling and wrestling and 
you know, doing all that shit. Because, you know, motherfuckers do that shit in the street. I done had club fights like that in the parking lot, nigga. I, I, I did UFC some while ago, if that's the motherfucking case. I ain't gonna put you yeah. in the octagon for uh, 6902. I, I, I mean, nigga, I done been in some parking lots that they might as well have just put the ring up. So, I get it. I, you know, it's cool. Yes, but for me, you these two hands is all you got to beat that other man. You can't grab him. You can't hold him. You can't put him in a headlock. You can't trip him. You got to use the motherfucking hands. And whoever got the best pair of hands <laughs> wins. It's always going to be boxing for me, dog. Oh, I don't care what other needs right. come up. It's always going to be boxing for me. We're coming to our last five minutes. Go ask you a couple of quick hitter questions. Tony, you just Whatever come to mind, answer. I'm just gonna and Richard, son of you, okay. So, right. music wise, what are you listening to right now? Man, I'm on Spotify, so I listen to a whole lot of shit. Uh, you know, well, what type of station is it? You're like old school, be, new school? It'd be my own created like playlist. Like I'll sit on Spotify for hours and just listen to new releases. And if I like it, I'll put it over into my playlist. Well, you got an acid mix then. Don't tell me what yeah, you got. Mean, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of everything. It just depends. Now, see, what I do is after I like all my songs, then I go in and create playlists for certain moods yeah. or whatever it is I'm trying to do, whether I'm riding down the street or, you know, trying to chill at the crib and get me some. You know, I got, I got, I got a playlist for everything. So mm -hmm. I, I got to agree with Tony. I mean, you know, um, I don't have a Spotify playlist per se, but, you know, I got several thousand songs on iTunes. So, you know, Same. I got access to anything, anytime. So whatever, right. whatever, whatever the mood, whenever, you know. Whatever I'm feeling, however I'm feeling at that time. Yeah, I don't just ride one thing till it just drives me crazy or just listen to yeah. it. Now, I will say this. I do not listen to one specific type of music. If if I am running, if I'm out running, I've got a different style of music in my earbuds than I do if I'm just chilling at the house. You know, mm -hmm. if it's me and my wife, that's a whole different style of music right there. Or if if you I'm in the gym, it's a different style of music. Okay. So, all right. So, next next question. We in well week six now of the NFL the season. season. We'll be riding now, man. Yeah. Have we you, are you talking about week W E E K or W E A K? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where the NFL season is right now. Have you changed your Super Bowl picks yet? I didn't even think I. I, don't, I didn't make any Super Bowl picks. I don't ever make Super Bowl picks. I think several weeks ago we we did talk about Chiefs Bucks rematch. I I think that was the consensus. I probably did. Yeah, I think that was consensus. And I think we all had different oh, outcomes on the winner. Are we treating it like a Polaroid? Are we shaking it in Kansas City Spade? <laughs> <laughs> if I were to pick now, I would say neither one of those teams are going to get in. And I know we just gave praise to the Bucks, but let's face it, the Rams got their number. Interesting. Yeah, but, mm, boy, let me tell you something. That ends up being the NFC Championship, Rams and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My God, what better NFC It's going to be one to watch. It's definitely going yeah. to one to watch. Jesus, that would be beautiful. Whether it's in uh, Los Angeles or Tampa Bay. Because yeah, sure. I, I think that's what it's going to be. But listen. Don't you boys, I'm telling you, there's something sneaky about this goddamn team and that little fucking midget running around back there. Oh, I hope I don't get canceled for that. Kyler, <laughs> they, 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 they. Hey, Arizona's a sleeper team. Oh, they, they, they are a sleeper team. team. Uh, they they are. Remember, he got coached by yeah. leverage before he went to town. But here's the thing. But, who, who has Arizona played yet? It don't matter. They whooping the ass, though, of everybody that they have. Well, if I played the Giants and the, uh, I mean, it ain't no, the, the Jets same way every week, I'd, I'd be 4-0, too. I'll do it sharpening their claws and getting them back. That's all like, The doing. Bills hadn't played nobody either, shit. The um, Cowboys hadn't shit. played. You know, Sunday night, the Bills people. played somebody. that They got that revenge for that AFC championship game. It That's was giving them fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was their first real opponent. Yeah, the game right, the game our, uh, our last minute, Tony. Thank you for joining as always. 
Uh, Richard, you can close out. I know you're hurting right now. You know, you had that bigot <laughs> ass coach. <laughs> I can't stand you. Hey, you probably hey. hated wearing black and silver. Know why, yeah, why, why do what, with no Raiders hat today? No Raiders in the background today? He hurting. Oh. He in mourning. No, oh. I, I will always support my squad. Oh, he got on Chiefs yellow. This ain't yellow. This is orange. Learn your colors. Learn your colors. Anyway. Hey. I can change the color of a nigga too. <laughs> Whatever. Everybody stay positive, stay blessed. 